So the NBA free agency period is coming up and better late than never, right? I'm going to be giving you guys my 2021 NBA free agency predictions. So I have a list of 30 NBA free agents that I predicted where they will sign in 2021. You guys are going to be seeing this midday on Sunday, August 1st. If somebody agrees to sign somewhere, just know I'm recording this on five or on July 31st at five o'clock. So if nobody is signed by them, you cannot make fun of me for predicting something to happen when it already did. And I still predicted it wrong. So if you guys do enjoy the off season content, feel free to drop a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you disagree or agree with anything I say, let me know down below. Where do you think maybe some of these free agents are going to end up? And then if there's anybody off the list that you think I should have mentioned and where they will go, please let me know down below. So we're going to start off with Bobby Portis. He just came off a pretty nice finals run. I think he'll get a decent payday. I think he's going to sign with the Sacramento Kings. They can go out there, get another wing. We don't know what's going on with Marvin Bagley. They're going to lose Rashawn Holmes. So they could use another front court guy. Next up, we have Campaign, who really made his payday throughout the 2021 playoffs, being a great backup point guard and sometimes starting point guard for the Phoenix Suns when Chris Paul was out. I think he's going to re-sign with the Phoenix Suns on that four-year, like $48 million mid-level exception that they can offer him. I don't see him leaving Phoenix and I think Robert Sarver will pay the luxury tax after re-signing Mikel Bridges and DeAndre Aiden. Nerlens Noel is next. He came off a great season for the New York Knicks, was one of the better defensive centers in the league in 2021 and I think that there's very few teams in the league that do have a lot of cap space and I think he's looking for that long-term contract. I don't think the Knicks will give it to him because the Knicks are looking for longer cap flexibility so I think he's going to sign with the Spurs on a multi-year contract. They could use some competition in that kind of front court with like no more with Marcus Aldridge. It's really just Jakob Pertl there and like Lucas Shalmanich. They can use another guy in that front court. He plays hard, pop should love him. The Miami Heat are gonna be signing this next guy and that is Blake Griffin. Now I could see Blake Griffin just re-signing with the Brooklyn Nets on a minimum, but I think he still wants to get paid a little bit of money. It's looking like that the Miami Heat might decline the option on Goran Dragic. Shams just reported that that's likely to happen. If it doesn't, don't blame me. I'm recording this before this is all happening. I don't think they're gonna be picking up the options on Igudala, Ariza. So I think they'll go after Blake Griffin and not pay him too much money on a one or two year deal. Andre Drummond is next up and I really don't think he would get a payday that he wants from any other team, but I think he would still like to compete for a ring. So I think he's going to re-sign the Lakers because the Lakers will have bird rights on him and they could really use any bench guys they could get. So I think Drummond and the Lakers will agree on a deal that won't pay him a lot of money, but he'll be back in LA. He'll compete and he's already made enough money from the Pistons and the Cavs. Kendrick Nunn will be switching teams here. I think he's going to sign with the Minnesota Timberwolves. They just traded away Ricky Rubio. I think they're going to use their middle level exception on a backup point guard behind D'Angelo Russell. And I think Kendrick Nunn is a perfect kind of young slasher, run and gun type guy for that second unit that can play with like Jada McDaniels, Leandro Balmaro. Be pretty fun to watch. Talon Orton Tucker is going to be a restricted free agent. I think he re-signs with the Lakers. Now I could see him signing with like a Wizards or or a Kings or a Spurs, but I think the Lakers will match any other deal and their ownership, the Bus family, is going to be willing to pay the luxury tax eventually after having to pay LeBron, AD, the other AD coming back in Drummond, and also now Talon Horton Tucker. Serge Ibaka's Clippers tenure seemed a little weird. So at this moment, he has an opt-in to his contract next year's season. And I don't know. I don't think he's going to re-sign with the Clippers. I just don't really feel like it's going to happen. I think he's going to join Blake Griffin in Miami and sign with the Miami Heat. The Heat are loading up on some big that could shoot. Speaking of the Clippers, Reggie Jackson, like campaign Bobby Porter's made himself a lot of money in the 2021 playoffs. I think the Clippers are going to be willing to pay Reggie Jackson a decent amount of money with their mid-level exception. Maybe what campaign got around like 12 uh, mil a year around there. I think he's going to resound with the Clippers. Like I mentioned before about Goran Dragic, it's looking like that he will be an unrestricted free agent for the first time in a little bit. And I think he's going to sign with the Boston Celtics. I feel like the Celtics, after kind of trading away or using their trade exception and Moses Brown on Josh Richardson and kind of getting out Horford for Kevin Walker. I think they, they need a point guard. They really can't roll into next year's season with like Marcus Smart being the one and Peyton Pritchard. I think they need a veteran there and I expect them to go out and get Goran Dragic. We have Devontae Graham up next. I don't think the Hornets are going to be able to bring back Malik Monk and Devontae Graham. I didn't mention Malik Monk, but here's a bonus signing. I think he's going to re-sign with the Charlotte Hornets and I think Devontae Graham is going to go to the Washington Wizards. They're going to have a little bit of money after this Russell Westbrook trade. They might go after some young shooting in Devontae Graham to help space the floor for Bradley Beal and some of their other guys. Derrick Rose will be a free agent this year for the first time in two years when he ended up signing with the Detroit Pistons. I believe he's going to re-sign with the New York Knicks on a one or two-year deal. That It's a two-year deal. 
it will have a team option. I think he likes New York a lot. He had a lot of fun last year, kind of being a leader on the team. They were good. He thinks that they could be good next year as well. He likes Tom Thibodeau. I think he'll be a Nick next season. Lowry Marketing will be a restricted free agent, joining also Kendrick Nunn, who I believe is a restricted free agent that we've mentioned so far, and Taylor Horton Tucker, as well as Devontae Graham. And I think that Lowry's going to re-sign with the Chicago Bulls. I don't really know if a team's going to go out there and give him a lot of money and the Bulls will be matching it, but I think the Bulls will get something done with him after they go after maybe a big fish, a big point guard that we'll mention maybe in a little bit. So I think that they're going to be able to bring back Lowry Marketing on a long-term deal, a three or four-year deal. Not sure how much though. Is he going to get 20 mil a year? Is he going to get 15? Is he going to get 25? I'm not really sure where his market's at. Next up, we have Will Barton, who is going to, I believe, opt out of his player deal. I think he's going to work on a deal with the Denver Nuggets and go back there on a multi-year contract. They are paying Jamal Murray, Nicole Jokic a lot of money right now. They're going to have to pay Mikel, uh, or Mikel, Michael Porter Jr. Uh, this offseason, pretty much, if they want to, because he'll be a restricted free agent next year. Who knows? They're going to probably work on like a super max for Jokic, but I still think that they're going to go over the luxury tax for now or go up against the hard cap for Will Barton, maybe on a one-year deal or two-year deal to try to make a run at it all next year. Big free agent here who I think is going to get a multi-year deal making about like 15 to $18 million, and that's Rashawn Holmes. I believe he's going to sign with the OKC Thunder. The Thunder didn't really add any big man throughout the draft. Now, yes, they do have Pukuzewski. They do have Darius Baisley. They trade away Al Horford. They trade away Moses Brown. I think they're going to go after that five. Maybe they'll be in a Jared Allen market. Maybe they're going to be in a Nerlens Noel market who I already mentioned, but I believe that they're going to lock up Rashawn Holmes on a multi-year deal because it's looking like he will not be going back to Sacramento. And I should have mentioned this before about Sacramento, but I know they got Tristan Thompson. Oh, and I guess also for the Celtics, yeah. Like Chris Dunn, I don't think they go in next year's season with Peyton Pritchard and Chris Dunn. Kind of forgot to mention that three-team trade. I forgot that happened. There's been so many deals going down. We have Kelly Oubre up next, and I believe it's going to be signing with the New York Knicks. Either it's going to be a one-year deal with a high AAV, similar to like J.J. Reddick's contract with the Sixers a couple years ago. The Knicks could give him one year, 25 mil, $20 million, and just help them compete next year while still leaving some cap flexibility over but next year, Kelly Oubre can come to the Knicks, but like, all right, I'd have a pretty big role there. I can make or play myself a little bit better than I did last year and work on that multi-year deal in 2022 free agency. So I think it would work out for both sides. And I think that Kelly Oubre will be signing with the New York Knicks. Evan Fournier was traded from the Magic to the Boston Celtics this past season at the trade deadline. I believe he will be re-signing with the Boston Celtics. They went out, they got Josh Richardson to help their bench a little bit, even though I think I'd rather have them kept Moses Brown. Really like that pickup for the Dallas Mavericks. They are going to be bringing back Evan Fournier, in my opinion. He was pretty solid for them. He's been playing great overseas in the Olympics. I think it's going to be a win-win deal for both sides. Now, this is the biggest wild card one because I have no idea where he's signing if he doesn't re-sign with the Miami Heat, which I don't think is going to happen. And that is Victor Oladipo because he's coming off a major injury and I don't really know. I don't think he's going to get a multi-year deal. I don't see any team really ponying up double-digit like millions for a multi-year contract for Victor Oladipo. So I'm predicting he's going to sign with the Dallas Mavericks on a one-year deal. He's going to be like, all right, I'll be maybe fully healthy mid-season. I get to play with Luka Doncic. It'll be a one-year, maybe fairly cheap deal, eight, $10 million. He'll make me better. And I'm going to work for that multi-year contract in 2022, as I just mentioned with Kelly Oubre and the Mavericks. are like, all right, it's a low risk, high reward. Maybe we can get him for like seven, $8 million on a one-year deal. He can play some good defense for us. Maybe he'll be a lot better playing around Luka Doncic. We'll see what goes. We have the Knicks signing their second guy in this video, and that is going to be Spencer Dinwiddie. I think Spencer Dinwiddie will get a one or two year contract similar to Kelly Oubre with a high AAV that can help the Knicks compete next year's season, but still leave a little bit of cap flexibility open for 2022 or 2023. As the Knicks are trying to get back in the playoffs next year, they might lose some of their free agents. I have them losing their ones as well. We don't know what's going on with Bullock or Birch. So I think the Knicks, they've been in the market for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dennis Shooter. I think they prefer Dinwiddie. And Dinwiddie's case, he He's probably trying to prove everybody that he was the guy before he got hurt. He was a borderline all-star for the Nets in 2020. And he could probably realize, still being that big market, a lot of eyes on me. We can compete for a playoff spot next year and like you're ready, try to get that new long-term deal in 2022 or 2023. So the Knicks are adding Derrick Rose or bringing back Derrick Rose, I should say. Kelly Oubre and Spencer Dinwiddie so far in this video. Duncan Robinson will be a restricted free agent. I believe he's going to re-sign with the Miami Heat. I could see a team going out there and giving him a lot of money, but I think the Heat will match anything he can get out there because he's a top five shooter in the league and the Heat are like realize how valuable that is and he'll be coming back to the Miami Heat next year. Dennis Schroeder is also kind of like a Victor Oladipo one. I don't know where he would sign if he doesn't sign with the LA Lakers. Apparently the Knicks are interested. I'm just maybe being in denial and I don't want to see that happen at all 
unless it's like a one-year contract. So I think that the Lakers, like I mentioned before, that they're going to pay the luxury tax. So I think they're going to bring back Andre Drummond. I think they're going to bring back Taylor Horton Tucker. I think they will also bring back Dennis Schroeder, pay him a decent amount of money to be their sixth man next year. Norman Powell will be a free agent for the Portland Trailblazers. This will actually be kind of a bonus one as well. Gary Trent Jr. I think they're both going to resign with their teams. Norman Powell going back to the Blazers and Gary Trent Jr. back to the Raptors. They It just makes sense. Jared Allen is up next and I think he's going to resign with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now I could see, like I think the Cavs are going to match any deal most likely and I could see him getting traded next offseason because I think the Cavs want to see how him and Evan Mobley work out in that front court if it works out well. Yeah, he's going to stay there for the remainder of his contract but if it doesn't then I think it could be like a one year deal. Not like a one year deal but he plays for one year and then gets traded and only plays one year of that contract. Lonzo Ball is next and yes since I had the Knicks getting Spencer Dinwiddie I don't think he's going to sign with the New York Knicks, unfortunately. I really wish he will. I really wish he would. I wish the Knicks would go after him. I would give him a multi-year contract because he's that good. He'd make us that much better. He'd make Randall better. He'd make RJ better, Mitch better, Obi better, quickly better, Grimes better. But I don't think that the Knicks are going to do it because it just seems too good to me. So I think he's going to sign with the Chicago Bulls on like a four-year, $80, $90 million contract. And I'm going to be super jealous. Mike Conley's up next. The Utah Jazz have been clearing up. We're trying to get under the luxury tax as hard cap to go out and get Mike Conley. I think that's like, that's pretty much a done deal already. He'll be going back to the Jazz on a two or three year deal. John Collins is next. I think there's going to be a lot of suitors out there. Maybe the Knicks will get involved, the Spurs, the Kings, the Mavericks, but I think the Hawks are going to match his deal as a restricted free agent. He'll be a Hawk next season. DeMar DeRozan is next. And yes, I believe that DeMar DeRozan will not be a Spur next year. I think that's pretty much 100% guarantee. Could be in a sign and trade, but I believe he's going to be signing with the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks really need to go out and get a, like a good free agent to help out Luka to try to get out of round one next year. You would, you would have Oladipo, as I just mentioned. You got Moses Brown. You would have DeMar DeRozan, as well as Luka and KP. I think that team is good enough to win at least a playoff series with Jason Kidd as your new head coach in 2022. He would just need to work on his three-point shot. And then DeMar DeRozan's old Raptor buddy, Kyle Lowry, I believe will also be leaving the Raptors. He's been there for so long, but I think he's going to sign with the New Orleans Pelicans. I think it would come down to pretty much the Miami Heat or Pelicans, and I think the Pelicans are just going to pony up a lot more money. This was pretty much set in stone that they wanted to go after Kyle Lowry when they traded away Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams. They want to get Zion Williamson, that playoff experience. They want to at least get Brandon Ingram some playoff experience as well since he hasn't been in the playoffs yet in his young career. And Kyle Lowry said it's not really all about the winning at the moment. It's really about the years and the dollars because he already got his ring. He doesn't like to compete, but he wants to get that long term security under his contract and still get paid a lot of money and I could see that happening with the Pelicans and then the last two are going to be opt-ins with their kind of current team I think Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns he will opt out but they will work on like a three-year 90 million dollar contract and he'll be back on the Phoenix Suns and then the big fish out there I don't think he's switching teams yeah Kawhi Leonard I believe he's probably gonna opt in and then just see how the Clippers do this year and probably work on a new extension at the end of this year's season or he's just gonna opt out and just work on a new extension right now, but I just can't see him leaving the Clippers next year. So yeah, those are going to be my 2021 NBA free agency predictions. Let me know what you agree with or disagree with down below. Drop a like if you did enjoy the video and a disclaimer once again, if somebody signs between July 31st at 5 p.m. and you guys are probably seeing this on August 1st around 5 p.m. or a little bit before that, please don't tell me in the comments because I've already known and I'll probably just comment it myself saying, ha, ah, you're such an idiot. How did you not know that? But yeah, thank you for watching. I love you guys. Probably double upload today as well. I think you might have saw uh, like a Russell Westbrook or post Wizards, Russell Westbrook, post Russ, Washington Wizards rebuild. There we go. I can't speak. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I love y'all. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.